Hey, what's going on everyone? So today I wanted to answer some questions that I've received because I haven't done this in a little while. And one common question I've been getting when it comes to college baseball is how do I balance my baseball and my academics and some of my social life as well? And so I want to go into what a, what a typical day looks like for a college player because I don't think everyone really understands what it's like to play college baseball, especially if you end up playing at a, at a really high level. Now, it does depend a little bit on, on where you play at. So if you're playing at a power five school at the division one level, baseball is going to be a huge part of your everyday life. If you're playing at a very small, let's say division three school, it doesn't mean that baseball isn't going to be as big a part of your life, but the time requirements are typically a little bit less at that level. So just keep that in mind. That's not always the case, but we've had hundreds and hundreds of players move on and play at all different levels of baseball. And I do see that the time commitment is a little bit different depending on the level and depending on the school. And I've coached at the Division One level. I've coached at a Power 5 school like Wake Forest, and I played at Wake Forest, so I know exactly what that schedule looks like, but I've also coached at, at Holy Cross, which is a smaller school. It's not a Power 5 school, but it is a Division One school, and there's still a huge time commitment when it comes to baseball. So let's talk about how you can better manage your time and then what the actual schedule looks like. So a couple things I'll start off with. The first thing is time management. You have to be good at time management if you want to be successful in college, if you want to be able to be really good in the classroom and really good on the baseball field. And it might take you a little bit to figure this out. I thought I was pretty good at time management. I realized my first semester at Wake Forest, I had to get better. I was putting a little bit too much time in the baseball, not as much time into school. I had to figure out how to work that equation to make sure that I wasn't falling behind in my studies. So that's kind of the first thing that I learned was how to manage your time and make sure that you're well organized and that you have a plan. Uh, that's one thing I would do every day is I would map out a plan on what I was going to eat, when I was going to eat, when is practice, what classes do I have, where can I fit in an extra lift if I need it. And so all those things, you have to be really, really good at being organized and having good time management skills. And again, you'll get better. You won't always go in great at it, but you have to be aware of it and you have to work on it. The second thing, and maybe the most important thing is sacrifice. If baseball is important to you, it's going to take up a lot of time. Again, we're gonna go into the schedule here in a second, but you're gonna to have to sacrifice other parts of your life if you wanna be really good at baseball. And so if you think about school, you have baseball, Right? You have your baseball component, you have your academic or school component, and then you have your social component. Now, for people that go to college and don't play a sport, that component is just pushed off to the side. And I usually say that you can be really good at, at two things, but you can't be really good at three. So if you don't go to school for baseball, there's no baseball component. Well, you can do your schoolwork and then you can do your social life. And that might mean for some people going out with friends all the time, staying out late and all that stuff. But if you're a baseball player, remember you can be really good at two of the three in my experience. And so you have to decide which two are you gonna be really good at. If you choose to be really good at baseball and good at your social life, you're gonna really, really struggle in school. You probably aren't going to be eligible. You're going to, you're going to struggle big time, especially depending on what school you go to. And you're probably also going to sacrifice a little bit of your baseball, depending on how much time you're putting into that social life. Right? So that's not a good trade-off. If you decide that you're going to be like a normal student and you're going to focus on your academics and on your social life, you're going to spend a lot of time out with your friends you're never going to make it in baseball, especially if you go to a school that is very competitive. And more and more schools are getting competitive with baseball. The landscape has changed. I'll make another video on this later. But with the transfer portal, more and more teams 
especially at lower division levels, are getting better and better. The draft has changed. Not as many players are going to the draft out of high school. A lot more players are going to college. NIL deals have changed the landscape a lot. Some players that in the past would have gone in the draft because they were going to get paid a lot of money are now getting these deals that are making them say, you know what, I'll go to college and I can still make a lot of money and then I'll get drafted down the road. And so the landscape of college baseball has really, really changed and it's more competitive than ever. And so if you think you're going to just do school and social and, you know, not worry as much about your baseball, you're going to get cut. <laughs> you're going to get cut really, really quickly. And so really what I did and what a lot of really good players do, and you kind of have to do it, is you have to focus on your baseball and you have to focus on your academics. And the social component has to be taken down in, in a lot of cases, a lot. It doesn't mean you can't have friends. It doesn't mean you can't go out and have a good time and enjoy college. You can. But you have to, again, when it comes down to time management, you have to pick and choose your spots to do that. And I've seen firsthand the players that don't understand that, and they say, no, I'm going out every night, or I'm going out you know, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They suffer a lot in those other two areas. So remember that. You can only be good in two or three of those areas, not three or three. Very rarely have I ever seen that happen. I don't know if I've ever seen that happen. And this is why. So I, I wrote down here a, a quick little schedule. And depending on the school, this schedule could change. Uh, there were times when I was in college where we had you know, 6 a.m. lifts and we woke up super early. Some schools might still do that. So just imagine if we had in a 6 a.m. lift. I, I changed the schedule a little bit to make it a little bit easier, but you're still going to see what a, a typical college schedule looks like. And so let's just say that you have a 9 a.m. class and you're going to get up at 8 a.m. to get breakfast. All right, so you're up at 8. You're going to go to class, let's say, at 9. And typically, I know at Wake Forest, I would go to school typically from like 9 to 1-ish. I would have classes. At 1 o'clock, I'd get out, I'd go have some lunch. I'd have to be down to the field at 2 o'clock. Practice at Wake Forest used to start right around 2.30, 2.45, I think it was. But I'd get down to the field at 2, got to get ready, maybe try to get some early work or extra work in, and then you're going to start your practice. I have our practice here going till 5, but if it starts at 2.30, probably going until 5.30. If it's starting at 3, you're probably going to 6. Usually a practice is going to be around 3 hours. A lot of times after practice, you're going to have a team lift. So let's say you're going to do a team lift at either 5 or 6 o'clock. Now you're going to lift for, let's say, an hour. So now you're at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock or so, depending on your lift. Okay, so your day started, you got up at 8 o'clock, and now you're already at, let's say, 7 o'clock, right? And you're, you still need to eat dinner. So now you're going to go eat dinner at 7 o'clock. Eat dinner for now, and now it's 8 o'clock. Back in my day at Wake Forest, what I would do after that is I have to go to study hall because, well, a lot of people that go to Wake Forest call it workforce because that's how much work they give you. And so you're going to do a lot of work. So unless you plan on going to a college that gives no work, which uh, there are probably some of them out there, but if you're going to go to a school, especially a school that prides themselves on, on academics, you're going to have to do a lot of work. So I'd go to study hall at 8 o'clock. And I'd stay at study hall till, you know, I have on here two hours. And that, that was a common occurrence. I have a tutor, someone to help me. Um, because, again, you've got a lot of other things going on baseball-wise. and You've got to make sure you stay up on your academics. And so, you know, now you're at almost 10 o'clock. Okay, so you've, you've gotten up at 8 and now it's 10. That's 14 hours that you've put towards school, eating, and baseball. So now, what are you going to do at 10 o'clock? This is where balancing that social component comes in. You're not going to be able to go, if you decide, okay, at 10 o'clock, now I'm going to go out all night, good luck getting back up at 8 o'clock tomorrow and repeating this over again. And this schedule, not that it happens year-round, but when you're in you know, heavy fall ball or you're in the spring season, and in the spring you've got travel and you've got all these other things going on, 
Like this is like day after day after day. In fall ball, you know, you got about a 45 day window or so where you're going day after day after day after day after day. I mean, this is, this is the schedule that you got to keep doing. And in the spring, you know, when you get back from winter break and you get going in January to get ready for the season that starts in, you know, February, you've got to, this is happening day after day after day. And then you're starting your schedule. And then you've got almost 60 games of, of your spring season that you're doing this every single day. So there is a lot of sacrifice that goes on. You're going to see a lot of your friends that aren't playing sports that are able to just go out and hang out and stay out all night and do whatever they want. And you can't, right? You might be able to mix it in here and there, but you're not going to live that same life. And so you have to make sure and understand that if you want to play college baseball and play at a high level, like it's a lot of work and you have to be willing to do the work. If you go to school to play baseball and you don't think that you're going to have to sacrifice some things and you think, oh, I can, like I said, be good at all three of these components, be really good at it. It, it doesn't happen. So you have to make sure that if you are going to play baseball, it is a commitment. It's a really large commitment, again, especially at, at certain levels in certain schools. So hopefully that gives you a little better idea of what it takes to be to be good. That's to be good, right? And we, could, we didn't even go into what it takes to be great because you can do more than that. I mean, there were plenty of times that after that 10 o'clock study hall, you know, get out of there late at night, I go back to the field and hit on my own, right? So like you can go early and, and hit on your own and get extra ground balls and, and all that stuff. So there's even more that you can do than just that. That's like the bare minimum at a school like Wake Forest or a school that takes baseball really serious. So hopefully that makes sense. And it's probably a little eye-opening for some people. And some people might say, oh, no, I can, I can do everything. I'll do all three. I know from experience it's, it's not easy to do. So hopefully that helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And we'll talk to you later.